Hi everyone, my name is Dr Teresa Swift and I'm a research fellow with the Young and Resilient Research Centre. I'd like to begin by um, exploring what is digital curation. Linda and colleagues in a 2014 study of the social curation platform Pinterest interviewed 20 users and found that through collecting, organising and sharing image bookmarks, users engage in processes of everyday ideation. What they mean by everyday ideation is that they use digital found objects as creative resources to develop ideas for shaping their lives. Curators assemble information into new contexts, forming and sharing ideas with practical and emotional value. There's also something known as the phases of social curation. Education designer Seitzinger proposes a distinction between digital curation and social curation. He states how digital curation is generally aimed at preservation and management of data and information artefacts and is the work of data specialists such as librarians or archivists and usually coordinated by an organisation. The intended audience or users of that data that is curated is unknown and the collection is intended to exist indefinitely. He then contrasts this to social curation, which he describes as the discovery, collection and sharing of digital objects like links, pictures, videos by an individual for a social purpose. And he proposes that social curation has four phases. The discovery of artefacts to create, the selection based on interests and context, the collection which is added to a cluster of artefacts, and then sharing with an audience. Uh, in my own work, I've developed this um, idea of the digital creativity of action based on an ex exploration of the ways in which students, academics and professionals conceptualise creativity. And I propose that this idea of the digital creativity of action can be defined as the imaginative ways we improvise via new technologies and innovate our social practices. And this involves an interplay between the structures of what we know, the occasions in which we interact, as well as the practices of who we are becoming. So how we imagine, improvise and innovate is always co-evolving with technologies, as well as situated within a particular context. Laura Robinson, a digital inequalities researcher, outlines the notion of what she calls the identity curation game. And she draws attention to the ways in which digital inequality impacts identity work and emotion management. Her in-depth interviews with young people from an agricultural community in California found three implicit rules to the curation game. Number one, constantly update or be sidelined. Two, engage in constant reciprocated identity affirming interactions. And three, maintain a strategy of vigilance to remove traces of failed identity performances. This should make us think about the ways in which unequal access to digital resources can contribute to exclusion, what she calls digital social invisibility. So in conclusion, uh, digital curation offers immense possibilities for exploring new ideas with digital objects as creative resources for our needs and aspirations. We can discover, select, collect and share. And social media technology is not something separate from us or an individual act, but part of how we collectively imagine, improvise and innovate with the world. But let us not forget that there remains not simply unequal access, but also differences in usage. And what this means is that we need to think about not only the highly visible acts of online engagement, activism or creativity, but also to surface and understand why less visible acts remain hidden or marginalise so as to address those conditions so we can level the playing field of the curation game.